The last message, we went into transgressions and thresholds. Transgression is basically how this whole reality has been set up. Another synonym for it is obviously sin. And threshold is something that's crossed that can't be uncrossed. So that's why it's linked with choice. When you make a choice, you can't unmake that choice. So I went into the importance of contemplation in regards to choice. And it's very important to contemplate. Some people call that meditation. That's fine, obviously. You can use whatever word you want. I personally prefer contemplation. So I take my time and I contemplate before I make a choice that I know is going to be essential and very important because I know once I cross the threshold of that choice I can't turn around and redo that choice it's already done that's why it's so important to contemplate first and then act in regards to choices but what about choicelessness something that obviously Jiddu Krishnamurti always talked about And a lot of people hear that and they think that it's about non-action, about doing nothing, not making any kind of choice at all. That's not really the truth of what choicelessness means, even from how he presented it. It's about making the only choice that one can make in a given situation. And it's about complete action. As an example, the house is on fire. Well, you're not going to sit down and contemplate on what to do when the house is on fire. You act. It's about total and complete and correct action in the moment. He would often give an example of a rattlesnake being right in front of you. Well, you respond immediately to the danger, to the threat that's in front of you. There's no time to contemplate. You're choiceless. You're in a choiceless situation. That's what he meant. It's a situational thing. So in the times to come, in my belief, we're going to be presented with both aspects. We're going to be faced with an enormous choice, singular, but choice is really. And it's going to be both choiceless and something that can be contemplated, but there's not going to be an infinite amount of time to do that. So there's the problem right there being presented right now, which is why it's important to contemplate on contemplation. And has one done that with all of their choices up to this point or with any of them? It's a big question, and it's a, it's a very important one. It's not something to scoff at or to listen to people who scoff at such things. Leave those people behind. Don't bother listening to them. Why do I say leave those people behind? Because anyone who would scoff at something so immensely important comes from the artificial, comes from that mind. And they don't deserve to be given the time of day in regards to any of this. They don't take anything seriously. They're just going to divert you and throw you down a dark, blind alley. So would one want to actually listen to anyone who would do that to you? Really ask that question and contemplate that. So this is nothing to scoff at. Anyone who would scoff at you for such important things is not your friend. They're a fiend. Take the letter R out of friend. That's what you have is a fiend. That's why you are a friend or you are not a friend. And also never forget too, you can only trust your own heart. All I am is a voice talking about what I feel is very, very important. So choiceless action or choiceless awareness, as Krishnamurti had often called it, is about total and complete action. It's an emergency. 
One doesn't wait to respond. One immediately responds. This is why contemplating about immensities right now is so very important. You don't wait until the actual emergency happens when there's no more time to contemplate. That's why sitting in silence, doing the contemplation now before the emergency is what's important. Taking the time right at this moment, taking it serious. This is why I talked about the choices that one makes echo through eternity. That's very true. It doesn't matter whether one conceptualizes the truth of it or not. Who is sitting in silence? Who is really getting sober right now? Who is willing to be serious in these moments and in these moments to come? I mean truly serious. Or is still one wanting to have fun? Yeah, look into the etymology of the word fun. If one wants to become more enlightened, if you will, in regards to what that word actually connotes, what it actually means. So if one wants to just have their fun right now and in the times to come, go ahead. And you can see how far that'll take you. That's also what this is all about. How far one's non-serious approach is going to take them in the future. Just treating it all like a joke, as I said many times before. One wants to treat everything as a joke well, then one gets treated like a joke. That's how it works. And again, you can't just wish that away just because you don't want to agree with how that works. But again, this is just my view. Obviously, I'm, I'm allowed to speak about my view as often as I want, as I've said. No one has to believe a stitch of it. Not whatsoever. Your view is your view. At the end of the day, that's what it's going to be. I'm just talking about mine. And if it's helpful to some, then it is. And if it's not, so be it too. Again, there's nothing I can do either way. I can't force the equation in anyone that's not what this is about but sharing sharing a viewpoint sharing sight sharing vision that is important and people who mock that you know that those people are trying to divert you from that importance they're again trying to send you down dark blind alleys where the spiders wait to devour you Because this whole system is a spider system. Yeah, that's why the internet is called the web. It's a big spied ore system. Yeah, we're the spied ore. The ore that get eaten by this demented clown cancer toilet system. It's messed up. It's dark. And those who keep saying, oh, you're so negative. There's so much good here. Yeah, this is, this is a positive and negative system. To know good and evil. But the thing is, when you're in the good situation, you get to turn a blind eye to all the bad. That's the point of it. And it wants you to turn that blind eye. Oh, you got it good. Just live your best life. Live a positive existence and turn a blind eye to all that is wretched and dark and hellish. Ergo, another big meaning behind the one eye symbol, in case anyone didn't catch on to that. Yeah, it is about turning a blind eye. 
Absolutely it is. And it didn't want you to know that. It doesn't want you to know that. So it'll send its minions to mock these things that I'm saying as well, obviously. But lest we forget that they've been outed, lest we forget. There you still are, all you minions. And who's enemy number one? A homeless bum. A homeless bum is enemy number one. Better be constantly vigilant towards your target, the homeless bum. Yeah, better be as verbally abusive as possible. It's hilarious. And some of you real hearts are starting to notice it. Yeah, they just out themselves more and more. And it's great that they do that. Thank you, minions. Thank you, artificials, for continuing to out yourselves now. It was a bit of a task to make it happen, to get you to out yourself. But what a fantastic victory that was, and now you're just doing it of your own accord. So thank you. Thank you very much. That's your own choiceless situation that you're caught in. Like a repeating record that you can't unskip out of. Just a skipping record. Just unable to take that needle and move to the next position so the song continues. So yeah, it's just constant repetition. That's the pattern. This whole vision of this hell is all based on patterns and pattern systems, as I was saying before. And it's important to recognize that, because that is linked with making proper choices too, recognizing the patterns. And if you can see that there's patterns that you need to avoid, then that's good. Avoid them at all costs. It's more important than can be imagined. That's what I wanted to talk about today. Take care out there. We'll talk again soon. Bye for now.